Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video. As you can see, again, we're talking about a new laptop and um, you remember that we previously talked about the new HP Omen X2S, which was also a dual screen notebook, um, but the HP only had quite a small solution right here. And then Asus said, hey Roman, didn't you know about the ZenBook Pro Duo? which is this thing right here. And this one packs a 4K OLED display right here and an additional almost 4K display. So it's a 38, uh, 40 pixel times 1,100 pixel on the bottom. So it's like half a 4K display. But due to the fact that it's going on the full length of the notebook, you can pack a ton of information down there, especially uh, production wise, like Adobe Premiere. We will take a close look at this in a bit. Um, you can really pack a ton of information down there in the additional display. Also, I can imagine that if you're a streamer, um, you're traveling and then you're deciding or you plan to stream from on the road somewhere um, from some kind of event, I think it can be very useful because in general, this thing is very strong or depending on what kind of hardware configuration you're getting, but you could um, play your game right here and you can, for example, put OBS in the bottom for streaming or have like a Google Chrome or like your live stream chat in the bottom display, which is really, really cool. I think something you for sure cannot do with any other uh, notebook out there and you would always need a second screen for that. Before we get to the teardown and look what's inside this thing, because that's the thing I'm always most curious about when I'm talking about those very high end and very expensive laptops, I always want to see the craftsmanship that goes into this and how is it assembled, what's the build quality of this um, thing. I'm talking about the hardware specs before we get to that. Um, this version is coming with the Core i7-9750H, uh, which is a six core CPU with up to 4.5 gigahertz boost. In theory, we will analyze that in a little bit. Also, it comes with the RTX 2060, so that's sufficient for video editing, live playback of 4K video footage, really no problem. Also, gaming is uh, really no problem on this uh, thing. But uh, this notebook is also available with the 9980HK, which I think is the much cooler option. Um, Asus, I wish you would have sent the 9980HK because it's so much cooler. It's an HK CPU, which means that you can actually overclock it. And um, I would have loved to try out um, what you can squeeze out of a 9980HK, which is an 8-core CPU and overclock it, maybe improve it with liquid metal and see what we can get out of this um, thing. I tried to, to do some improvements with Intel XTU, which is possible on this six core CPU. So some kind of adjustments, which I will um, show you in a bit what you can actually do for tweaking. When it comes to the connectors, we have USB type A on the left and on the right, we have a full size HDMI um, connector on the left. And also we have USB type C, AKA Thunderbolt 3 on the right. So if you need any kind of additional connectors, like, uh, I don't know, additional USBs or whatever, you can use it with an adapter over the USB Type-C or a Thunderbolt 3 connector. When it comes to cooling, Asus did something really cool design-wise. So if you move the screen backwards, it's lifting up the entire case. Therefore, you get like an additional um, gap between your notebook and uh, the table, for example. Therefore, it can breathe very nicely. Therefore, temperatures are really nice. The 9750H in the typical Intel configuration would only allow um, a steady load of like 45 watt all the time. Um, the cooling is sufficient enough that you can also draw about 80 to 90 watt all the time. That's something I tried. Um, so if we use Intel XTU, which is something I will show you in a bit, you can tweak this by um, increasing the Turbo Boost time window and therefore um, get more performance out of this because the cooling is sufficient enough. One more word about uh, the two screens inside the ZenBook Pro Duo. Um, we have, as I said before, we have a 4K OLED display on uh, top, which is glare, and we have like a half 4K display on the bottom, which is matte which is something I don't really understand. I would have loved to have both matte. I'm not really a fan that much of um, glossy displays because you have those reflections from the back. It makes it look really, really nice. Like the colors are absolutely beautiful. Obviously for OLED displays, it's yeah, there's nothing you can beat. Like it will beat everything else. Um, uh, like it really beats everything else color wise. It's really beautiful, especially if you're doing some content creation with like Photoshop or um, like Adobe Premiere. The colors with OLED displays are just absolutely amazing. So when it comes to the displays, really, really cool. We have touch displays. You also have this stylus included, uh, which you can use for um, example, for the bottom one, if you want to, uh, to write on it. So that's also uh, included. 
Now we are going to talk about some more technical aspects in detail, also the boost behavior of this CPU in this notebook. We have a 9750H in the here, which is 6 core 12 thread CPU that's rated at 2.6 gigahertz across all cores, while a single threaded load will cause the CPU to boost to a maximum of 4.5 gigahertz according to Intel's database. Now if we, if we check the boost behavior, it's more like 4.2 to 4.3 most of the time but what's kind of interesting is that most of the cores are boosting to this uh, frequency and not only a single core. This will result in Cinebench um, R15 single to produce a lower single threaded score than if just one core would continuously boost at like 4.5 but let's take a look at uh, the score in the end. With a few and very easy and quick adjustments, we can squeeze some additional performance out of this notebook. You can see in a Cinebench CPU single score, we have now 184 um, points. Previously, we had 176 points and multi improved from about 1120 to 1230, so gained an additional 100 points here. The tweaking was done over Intel XTU using a core voltage offset of minus 50 millivolts, therefore causing the CPU to run a little bit colder and consume even less power. In addition, I adjusted the Turbo Boost power time window to 128 seconds from 28 seconds. What this is doing in detail, I'm going to show you now. Basically, when we run Cinebench R15 Multi, you can see power consumption here is about 80 watt of the CPU. And typically, if this is run stock, this will drop down to 45 watt maximum after 28 seconds, which is the Turbo Boost time window. Now, Adjusting this to 128 seconds, it can maintain the full turbo over the full Cinebench run, so in theory 128 seconds before it will start to throttle down to 45 watt. Therefore, we can squeeze some additional performance out of the system. Yeah, again, 1230 roughly, so increasing about 100 points. So some additional free performance if you just use some quick adjustments over Intel XDU. This is how the typical Adobe Premiere workspace could look like. Uh, we have the preview window right here, timeline down there. And usually if we would have everything inside just one screen, we would also have like the media browser right here and then like effects on the top right. But the way I'm going to use it right now is that I have like the media browser in here. Um, I also have the uh, like color effects down there so I can just easily like take additional material and drop it into the timeline. Also do some, I don't know, like uh, color grading stuff um, basically over this window, which is here on the bottom left, um, like reduce uh, the color temperature or whatever. So it's a lot more convenient if you have so much space and so much stuff that's visible. Um, I hope you can see it kind of in the camera because it's really difficult to capture this with the camera. Um, considering that this is a glare screen and this is a matte screen, um, makes it really, really difficult for filming what you can just see, but I hope you can kind, kind of get an idea what I'm talking about. Because previously on the HP notebook, for example, the tiny screen in the, little, in the middle was not that useful. You couldn't put that much information down there, but on here, you can really display quite a lot. Already removed eight screws, but I think here we have some additional rubber pads. There could be some screws hiding underneath. Opening was really quick and easy. I think I only had to bend one of those noses back a little bit and then it was really, really simple and easy to open. So usability or accessibility for opening is really, really good so far. It looks very clean to me after removing this small plastic sheet right here. NVMe SSD on this position. Uh, this is the battery, obviously. We have a uh, Wi-Fi module, which should be this one. Uh, this is the chipset right here. We have a massive heat pipe solution. Um, one on the right, one on the left. This area here should be the GPU because we have an additional surface area right here, which should, uh, should be covering um, all the memories from the GPU. And this underneath here should be the CPU. SSD upgrade is very simple and easy. You would just have to open it, replace this one. This would be very straightforward. Uh, we have some speakers on the left and on the right. 
both of them are not mechanically attached, like they're not attached over screws. They just plug in into some smaller bolts and then the wires go here to this connector. And I think this one goes down here over this connector. So both speakers are connected in here. Battery is also fairly easy to remove. Just remove the screws on the side and then um, remove the clip that's holding down the connector and you can remove it. Now we can finally take a close look at the heat pipe solution of the ZenBook Pro Duo. Uh, we have a ton of copper right here. Um, this is the contact surface for the CPU, contact surface for the GPU. Everything is used with thermal paste, which is really cool. Even the contact surface for the memories. So for the GPU uh, memory, we also have thermal paste. This is the contact area for the VRM or the inductors of GPU and CPU power solution. So also here was uh, thermal paste used um, we have some very thick heat pipes going to the CPU and also to the GPU and in the end we have uh, the fin stacks which are then used for uh, the cooling itself. Interesting compared to the HP solution is that the fans are not directly attached to the heat pipe solution itself. They're sitting still inside the case, we could remove them right now. Uh, we have the GPU here uh, surrounded by the memory, still covered in some thermal paste. Again, we, uh, similar to the HP notebook, we have this sheet right here, which seems to be some kind of uh, shielding material. Uh, chipset right here, as I said before, we have the CPU on here. Um, all the inductors are for the voltage supply underneath here. We actually still have thermal pads and those thermal pads are making contact uh, to the MOSFETs or the power stages. Now we can see the 16 GB of DDR4 memory. As you can see, they're soldered to the PCB, so no chance of upgrading anything on this thing. So the only thing you can basically upgrade is either the Wi-Fi module, which doesn't really make much sense, or increase the capacity of your SSD on this area. So much about the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. Very interesting thing from a technical perspective, especially the way they implemented two screens into one device is the best solution I've seen so far, especially comparing it with like previous solutions from Razer where a display was integrated in the touchpad or we have Apple products where we have the touch bar. But this is so much cooler, especially when you're in production like Adobe Premiere uh, or you're streaming your having your OBS and live stream stuff down there. I think this is a very good solution when it comes to dual screens on laptops. Uh, but for gaming, I think I would stick to a normal laptop, obviously. But if you're going for production stuff, Adobe Premiere, you can make very good use of the two screens and the additional uh, display you have on there. Technically, there's nothing I can really argue with uh, looking at the internals of this thing. If you want to go for liquid metal, keep in mind that it's bare copper and you would very likely have to open this device again and reapply liquid metal because over the time, liquid metal would diffuse into the copper. Um, that's because it's not a nickel plate surface I personally wouldn't recommend to use liquid metal on this device simply because you would have to reapply after a couple of months. Um, so much about the ZenBook Pro Duo please leave a comment down below if you liked it or not or if you have any feedback about this thing. Thanks for joining in and see you next time. Bye!